Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 23 is brought to you by examclear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so let us start with the plant's growth dependent movements. Growth dependent movement of a plant in response to a stimulus is termed as tropic movement. So this kind of movements which happens because the plant is growing. Now as I said these movements are also of different types based on what kind of stimulus is there. Right? So these such growth dependent movements are generally directional. For example you would have seen that the roots always grow downwards. The shoot always goes upward. So that means there is a particular direction which they follow. Shoot never comes down. Or root never goes up. So they, these kind of movements are generally direction. They follow a particular direction. Now such movements also happen due to a stimulus because there has to be a trigger for anything to happen. I mean why is the shoot growing upward? There has to be a reason. Why is the root growing downwards? Again there has to be a reason. So that reason behind these kind of di directional movement is nothing but the stimulus. So these tropic movements are divided into many types depending upon the different types of stimulus. So tropic movements are also known as tropism. That, that is another word for tropic movement. So let us look at the different types of tropic movements. Phototropism, geotropism, hydrotropism and chemotropism. So phototropism means the plant movement which is growth related in response to light. The word photo means light. Similarly, geotropism means, geo means earth. Earth or we can take it as gravity. So the growth related movement in a plant in response to gravity. Then we have hydrotropism. Hydro is water. So that is the movement within response to water. And chemotropism is for chemicals. So these are the different types of tropic movements seen in plants. So let us discuss each of them in detail one by one. So we will start with phototropism. It is bending of a plant in response to light. Now it is seen that in presence of light coming in one direction, like let us suppose if there is a unidirectional light, that means light is coming only in one direction. It is seen that a plant tends to bend towards light. That is, the shoot of the plant generally have a tendency to bend towards the direction of light. Let us look at this example. Now, this tree. In this tree, the light is equivalent on all the directions. I mean, all the portions of the plant are getting equal amount of light. So, there is no bending. But let us, if we look at some scenarios where, let us suppose if you have a plant potted in your balcony and it is potted in such a way that one portion of the plant is under shade and the other portion is under, is getting the sunlight. So you will see that in due course of time, the plant gradually tends to bend towards the light. So the plant parts which bend towards light are said to be positively phototropic which part of the plant is positively phototropic shoots because the shoots bend towards light so shoots are called positively phototropic whereas the plant parts which bend away from light are said to be negatively phototropic so roots are negatively phototropic because the direction of light light comes from up Right? And the roots grow downwards. So roots are basically going opposite to the direction of light. That is why roots are negatively phototropic. Now if you want you can perform this experiment to see that yeah this, this phenomenon actually happens. Let us suppose if you have a plant this way. The plant is kept inside your house. Okay? And there it is kept in front of a window and the light comes only from that window. So now what happens if you look at this plant, this portion of the plant, this side of the plant is shady. Here you are not getting any light. So light is coming only from this direction. So in due course of time you will see that the shoot actually bends towards the direction of light and the roots gradually go away from the direction of light. So that is why shoots are positively phototropic and roots are negatively phototropic. 
Now there is a reason behind why these kind of bending happens. Right? So we will talk about that reason a little later because plant hormone plays a role in that. So for now you should just understand the different types of plant movements. Right, so let us look at the next movement that is geotropism. It is bending of a plant in response to gravity. So plant parts which bend towards gravity. When I say gravity, gravity is nothing but earth. So those plant parts which bend towards gravity, which grow towards gravity, they are called positively geotropic. So can you guess which part of the plant is positively geotropic? Yes, you are right. You, these are the roots because roots grow towards the surface of the earth. It goes towards the earth. That is why it is towards gravity and it is positively geotropic. Whereas plant parts which bend away from gravity, they are said to be negatively geotropic and the best examples are shoots. So here you can see the shoots always grow upward and the roots always grow downwards. So that is why we told that these growth related movements are directional. So here you see there is a particular direction of the growth of shoots. Similarly in phototropism also the shoots were bending towards the direction of light. So that was also a directional movement. So the movement will happen only in one direction. It is not that one shoot will bend towards light the other shoot will bend away from light. So everything will happen in one particular direction. So here if you see, if you keep a plant like this, I mean if you keep it upside down, even then it is not that the roots will grow straight like this. The roots will always try to go towards the earth's surface. So this is how the roots will start growing and this is how the stem will start growing. So this is their directional movement. The third one is hydrotropism, which is the bending of a light in response to water. So very similarly, plant parts which bend towards water are positively hydrotropic. To which part bends towards water? Now, soil contains water, right? So which part of the plant grows towards soil? Roots, of course. So roots are positively geotropic because it is bending in a direction where there is more water. So roots are positively hydrotropic, whereas plant parts which bend away from water are negatively hydrotropic. So shoots are negatively hydrotropic because they move, their direction of movement is away from the soil, right? So here, let us suppose if this is the uh, soil, so here you have water. So roots are going towards water, so they are positively hydrotropic and shoots are going away from water, so they are negatively hydrotropic. So let us look at the next tropic movement that is chemotropism. It is the movement of a plant in response to chemicals. So what do you think, where do we have the chemicals? The chemicals are again present in the soil itself. So the plant parts which bend towards chemicals, they are positively chemotropic. Now roots are positively chemotropic towards useful minerals. I mean, everything is chemical, right? So in the soil, you have some useful chemicals uh, useful minerals but at the same time you have some harmful chemicals. So we can say that roots are positively chemotropic that means it tries to grow towards the useful chemicals towards the useful minerals like phosphorus, nitrogen, all those things and it is negatively chemotropic towards the harmful acids. So acids are also chemicals and minerals are also chemicals. So if it grows towards them then it is positively chemotropic if it goes away from them, then it is negatively chemotropic, right? So these are some of the tropic movements which are related to growth of the plant. So if you see, all these tropic movements happen only when the plant actually grows. So they are related to the growth of the plant. Now let us look at some of the nastic plant movements which are not related to their growth. They are a result of immediate response to stimulus. So random plant movements in immediate response to stimulus. Let us look at some examples like creepers and touch me not plant. So here in this picture you can see a creeper that is by means of some soft stem like structure. Their stems are not very hard. So here you see the green colored structure. They are actually winding up with the grill and then they are growing like that. 
so these soft stems are known as tendrils so by means of the tendrils they come in contact with some support maybe a wall or a building or a gate etc and that part of the tendril in contact with the object doesn't grow much grow as fast as the other part as a result the tendril tend to encircle the object so here if you see let us suppose if this is a tendril right so this portion of the tendril is in direct touch with the wall and this portion is away now the portion which is in direct touch with the uh, grill or with the object that doesn't grow much whereas the other part grows more so what will happen when one part doesn't grow and the other part grows more there will be slight bending and because of that bending they will start moving in this fashion they will start encircling that object so they will start moving in this fashion so this is also to some extent we can say that this is also a movement which is related to growth but here it is not very specific in direction it is not a directional movement for example in case of phototropism or in case of geotropism the shoots will always grow up roots will always go down in this case it is not like that it will take the direction of that particular object over which it is growing similarly let us take the example of the touch me not plant which belongs to the mimosa family so these kind of plants if you see here when you touch these plants this is how the leaves respond so as soon as you touch them the leaves start getting assembled i mean they they start drooping up so this kind of movement is not related to growth and it is also a very immediate response to the stimulus the stimulus here is the touch and what is the response the response here is the folding of the leaves right so how, why does this happen how does this response come into picture now this response is immediate here and often this is known as thigmotropism which means response to touch like how we have chemotropism response to chemicals similarly people also give a term called thigmotropism which is response to touch now why does this happen this happens because of the change in the turgor pressure what is turgor pressure now when you look at the structure of a touch me not plant it is somewhat like this you have these kind of leaves so in the picture also you can see they have these kind of leaves right now this opening and closing is governed by some fluid filled structures which are present at the base of each leaflet now in one this this one leaf this one big leaf is a compound leaf and in one leaf you have small leaflets so each of this is called a leaflet now at the base of each leaflet there is a structure which is a fluid filled structure which is known as pulvinus so we have a fluid filled structure which is known as pulvinus so it is present at the base of each leaflet it is also present at the base of the compound leaf and it is also present at the base of the leaf stalk that means let us suppose if this is the plant so somewhere here you again have another leaf like this so somewhere here you again have another pulvinus so we call this as primary pulvinus we call this as secondary pulvinus and we call this as tertiary pulvinus so this is called primary pulvinus which is present at the base of the leaf stalk now the pulvinus which is present at the base of the compound leaf that is called secondary pulvinus and the pulvinus which is present at the base of each leaflet that is called tertiary pulvinus and what is pulvinus it is nothing but a fluid filled swollen structure right now what happens is that when we touch the leaf lets that is when we when the cell, when the leaf is touched those cells produce some electrical signals and those cells in the pulvinus respond by flushing out potassium and water now inside the pulvinus i told it is fluid filled so the cells inside the pulvinus has lot of water so whenever it is touched 
So how do they respond to that starch? By expelling out water. Now due to this excessive loss of water, the leaflet closes. So basically turgor pressure, just now I told it happens due to change in turgor pressure. It causes change in turgor pressure. Now what is turgor pressure? Turgor pressure is nothing but the pressure that happens when water inside the cell begins to expand and push on the cell membrane. I mean inside the leaf we have small plant cells. So inside that we have water. Now when water increases too much and then it exerts a pressure on the cell membrane. That is known as turgor pressure. Now when the amount of water inside the change varies, if the amount of water decreases, then what happens? The leaflet will shrink. If the amount of water increases, then it will again expand. Right? So it, it is all about the change in the amount of water. Now whenever it is touched, what happens is that the cells inside the pulvinus, they respond by expelling out excess water. Now when the water expels out, there is less water inside and as a result, the leaflets shrink. So this is the reason behind this drooping of, of the touch-me-not plant. Right? So these kind of movements fall under the category of nastic movements. That is, they are random movements. They are not directional movements and they are an immediate response to stimulus. Clear? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.